Hey dear everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and today I want to answer this interesting question over the web which says how many programming language should a person learn and should I stick to just one programming language or should I learn multiple of them? Now of course the answer of this question heavily depends on the perspective of the person who is answering the question but I have my own thoughts regarding this and I'll share my perspective but before that I would like to share this interesting incident that happened to me just yesterday and this is completely relevant to what we are about to discuss. So yesterday I went for a housewarming party, one of my friend bought a new house and this was a nice casual get together with a variety of people. And I usually don't go out much, uh, but it was a very close nearby kind of a get together. I was sitting there in his amazing sofas and we were enjoying our dinner and then an elderly person came around. Not really elderly, around 40s. I don't consider 30s as very elderly. They're just like my same age. So above 40 or 45, this nice gentleman sat around with me and we were having a discussion, usual casual stuff. And then he brought up a point that uh, he said that, you know, People who migrate to countries like Turkey or who migrate to Dubai are living an absolute miserable life and these are absolutely bad countries. You should never even travel to those countries. And I didn't pay much attention to his words. Uh, probably he might be having some bad experience from those countries and I totally accept that, that you may like some countries, you may not like some countries. Then after a few minutes, he brought up another point and said, you know what, Australia is such a bad country, we should not travel much there, even do not, I do not support the tourism of that. And I, that thing got me a little bit onto the shaky side that uh, I asked him that, uh, what happened exactly to you that why do you hate all of these three countries so much? Uh, he said, no, nothing personal to me, but I've heard this, I've heard that. And this got me a little bit in the situation. I asked him that, uh, how many countries have you traveled so far? He said, I've never been to outside of my own country. And this made me laugh there because I'm a kind of a person who has traveled to almost 30 countries so far. I've spent my good time in Turkey, in Dubai, in Greece, Cambodia, Vietnam, and a whole lot of other places. And I have nothing but respect and love to all these countries. This is coming up from a, some person who has experienced the travel in those countries. I absolutely love Turkey. I love the baklava there. But this person who has never stepped foot outside of his own country, he has no stamp on his passport so ever. And he's just saying, this is bad, this is bad. Now, surely I do agree on the point that everybody should love their own country and you have full right. And in, in fact, it is your responsibility to love your own country. But this doesn't mean you get a right to hate any other country. If you have some bad experience there, I surely agree there. That go ahead, bash that country. It's your right too. But not without having an experience in that country. Now moving back on to the point where I say that how many programming languages should you learn? Now it heavily depends on what age or what phase of life you are in. If you are on to the phase where you are already working in some company, then sometimes the upgrade is necessary because you want a pay hike or something like that. And in that phase of life, it's absolutely difficult to change the programming language as well because the stack on which your company is working will not allow you to change like anything or the next day. Either you have to make a switch in the company itself or sometimes you have to even migrate to different location as well just because you want to change your programming language. So at that phase, it's absolutely difficult to change the programming language. But what actually makes me think too much is why students are so much worried about just sticking to one programming language and that's they want to do throughout their life. See, the point is right now you are a student and you are completely free to explore the world as much as you want. It's great that you have interest in programming language but the point is why you want to stick to just one programming language. Surely I'm not saying just switch on to other programming language just the very next day. My rule of thumb is always spend the five things with that programming language. Make five projects, spend at least five months with full dedication to that programming language. But since you are a student, you should migrate to other programming language as well. 
Now, it's always funny to see in the programming comment section uh, of all the programming videos that people just bash that Python is the best programming language or JavaScript is the best or Java is the king. Surely, there might be in some aspect, but this doesn't mean it gives you the right to say that since Python is the best, Java is absolutely a crap programming language. Or to say that Swift is amazing, that means a JavaScript is absolutely bad. No, they are not. Just answer me this very simple question. If one programming language is so amazing and so absolutely dominating, why does the other programming language exist? Why is it that when you study engineering or computer science, in the first semester you are being taught with Python, then in the next semester you are taught with C or C++, some other semester Java, some other semester PHP or ASP.NET, why they are trying to teach you so much of the programming language? because they want you to understand that the variety is absolutely good. I've seen this argument many times that if you want to use MongoDB as the database, you should absolutely use Node.js and nothing else. And I just ask, why is it so? Why are you saying it that in order to use the MongoDB, we have to use Node.js? Is Node.js not compatible with MySQL? Is the performance is low grade when we use MySQL with Node.js? And if it is so, why there are so many drivers and ORM present in MongoDB, in MySQL, to be used with PHP, maybe Node.js, maybe Ruby on Rails? Why is it so? As a student, I highly recommend everybody to have a diversity in the life. When you are doing anything in a programming language, how you are making the conclusion that for doing this thing, the programming language is absolutely good. Is it, is it something like that when we design an API, PHP is not capable of it, or maybe Django is not capable of it? How you are saying it? When you are seeing about, let's just say, uh, declaring a login page, why are you saying that PHP cannot handle it and Node.js can handle it? Both of them can. And while working with the programming language, let's just say you want to do scraping, how can you say that scraping is absolutely good only in Python and not in JavaScript or in PHP? And this reminds me of the, of the sponsor of this video, Octoparse. Octoparse is an amazing web scraping tool and I'll tell you more about that by the end of this video. And thank you so much Octoparse for sponsoring this video. My main point with this video is in the student life, you have an absolute amazing freedom to try out whatever you want to try. Don't just waste it with just sticking to one programming language. This doesn't mean you should not spend good amount of time with that programming language. But the more diversity you can have in the student life, you will not be able to have that diversity once you move into a company. In the company, it's governed by your boss or what the need of that tech stack is. As a student, you can explore Node.js, you can explore Django, you can explore Ruby on Rails, you can explore MySQL. As much as you want to explore, you should explore. And on top of that, this diversity actually helps you while you are doing any interview as well. If you have a mastery in one subject, that's absolutely amazing. But you have, if you have a mastery in variety of subjects and variety of frameworks, then surely it helps the company to understand that you know how to Google the stuff and how, you to, how to achieve the project level of a course. It surely helps them that you understand the concept as a core and the programming language and anything is just a tool for you. And eventually, it happens in almost every company that one day or the other, you have to migrate from one stack to another stack. And at that point of time, companies are looking up for that if this person is already experienced with number of programming languages, he surely will be able to migrate pretty easily in a short duration of time. Now, of course, with this, this video can be easily misinterpreted that I'm saying that you should switch on to programming language very next day. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is explore as much as possible, but you should not just stick to just one programming language and should try to do each and everything in that programming language. It is not good. Try to expand yourself because the student life is the amazing life. It's not going to come back pretty easily. So try to just learn as much as you can and try to diverse as much as you can. And now talking about our amazing sponsor for this video, Octoparse. Let me show you what Octoparse is. Thanks to our sponsor, Octoparse. Octoparse is a very powerful web scraping tool that extracts information from website without any Python scripting. For example, you need to extract data from hundreds of websites and turn those data into valuable information. Because each website has a unique layout and structure, 
you need to build a crawler for every single one of them. It's a ton of work and you don't want the time to do it. So what do you do? Either you hire a programmer or just code it yourself. Either they cost you a fortune or demand excessive workload. It will be best if you have an automation tool like what Octoparse offers. It has an intuitive user interface uh, that you can accomplish web scraping with mouse clicks. As such, it is easier to extract data and from hundreds of websites in a short period of time. You don't need to code, you don't need to hire a developer or outsource any service because Octopus is free. You will have much lower maintenance cost for your work. It saves you a lot of time for debugging the crawlers as you can just fix workflow with a simple drag and click. Octopus also offers paid plan that can get fast cloud extraction. It is very continent as it wouldn't put any strain on your local resource without worrying your hardware limitation, internet speed or anything else. All I want to say is have a diversity, have an open-minded thoughts and always try to look for learning more. It's not about you should make up your mind without experimenting with something or without experiencing with something. Having an open-minded thought is not easy. It's challenging to accept anything that's coming to you. But I think we all should be a little bit more broad-minded. More openness is absolutely appreciable. Go ahead, explore more, learn more programming language. There is so much to explore in this amazing programming world. And make sure you hit that subscribe button as well because that's something which makes me happy. And let me know in the comment section which is the programming language that you are working on currently and which is the one you are looking forward to explore in the near future. That's it for this video. I'm gonna catch you up in the next one. Make sure you hit that subscribe and I'll catch you up in the next one.